Hey everyone, welcome to the Long Story Short Show. My name is Jen, and today I'm going to talk to you about Cloak and Dagger Season 2, Episode 5. And I'm going to be doing something a little bit different, so let me know in the comments if you like this format a little bit better than my last previous few episodes. So I'm going to jump right in into my favorite character, Detective Bridget O'Reilly. She's been going through a lot. She just realized she was split in half, and there's like an evil version of her out there wreaking havoc, wreaking mayhem, and recently is stuck in the rabbit hole searching for a way out. But since she is half a human, she needed Tandy's help to get out, but Tandy broke the rules last episode, so that girl is stuck in there. Meanwhile, we have the good Bridget, or the docile Bridget, out in the real world trying to figure out how to get back to her normal self. She keep, We keep seeing the scenes of her at the shooting range, and she's practicing her shooting. And every single time she brings that target in to look at it, she is way off. Doesn't even get close to the person cut out. It's always way over to the side. And we see her visiting the old hotel room that the evil Bridget had, and she's looking at all the information and the evidence that the evil Bridget put together. And my theory is that since the host that was uh, exposed to the Roxine ingredient or vaccine, whatever we wanna call it right now, they are split into two. So I think that we are going to be needing that evil Bridget back in the rabbit hole in order to create a whole complete detective Bridget O'Reilly. It kind of sucks that we kind of have to wait for her because now the good Bridget is out here just trying to be a good cop, be a good person, but she can't because she's scared, intimidated, and honestly can't shoot. Next, we have Tandy. And Tandy opens up this episode with a really cool story about a a viper and a farmer. And long story short, the viper bites the farmer at the end of the story. And it's, it's like, okay, why are you trying to tell us this story? And it's kind of cool to see how during the episode, Tandy's kind of telling this story while we're following Tyrone. Also, we see Tandy definitely crossing lines again. This girl is becoming more and more, what I think, more and more like the evil Bridget or more and more like she's, I think that Tandy is becoming more and more like a vigilante. Her lines are definitely getting blurred and she is getting information pretty much any way that she can. There's even a scene where we see Tandy use Tyrone and kind of make him out to be this bad guy in order to get closer to what she thinks is a lead to finding the missing girls. First off, that's messed up. That's supposed to be your best friend and you're using him to gain information from somebody else, but you're not even telling him. And on top of everything, you know he's wanted. So he can't even be seen out in public and you're making him come out in public. So shame, shame, Tandy, shame, shame. The last thing that I find really interesting is that Tandy is so focused on telling her mom, telling these girls that leaving is a choice and they just need to get up and leave. And she kind of holds a grudge against her mom because she finds out that her dad was an abuser but kept him safe, kept him with money, kept him with a nice house. And so her mom stayed longer than she should have. And she definitely, she blows up on her mom and tells her, a choice is a choice, you just need to leave. But I don't think Tandy understands that the situation is a lot more complicated than that. There was feelings involved, there was a child involved. Uh, She couldn't just leave 
and just say, okay, goodbye, when she knows that even though her dad was an abuser to her, he never put a hand on Tandy. He always provided for Tandy. And on top of that, she loved her dad with all of her heart. So it's a very hard situation for her to just leave. At the end, we see Tandy going to this grow house and she beats up the people that work at the grow house because she receives information from her lead that her ex-boyfriend is the leader of the drugs that are running through New Orleans and he knows everybody. Shocker to me and hopefully to everyone else, the lead that Tandy had was the woman that was working at the nonprofit seeking guidance to help the girls from these abusive situations. But really what this lady has been doing is filtering out which girls have families or people that care about them and which girls who don't. And this girl has been using that filtering system so she can kidnap the missing girls and use them for whatever they want to be using. It's like, she even tased Tandy at the end of the episode and we see her tied up on a gurney just like uh, one of the other girls that Tyrone tried to save. So definitely in the next episode, we're gonna be seeing Tandy either escape from these people or actually figure out what has been going on and maybe Tyrone has to come and save her. Lastly, I wanna talk about Tyrone. And Tyrone is our unicorn in this, in this story because he sees darkness, he uses darkness, but he really, really sees light in every situation. And it's kind of inspiring to see because even though he has to live in this abandoned church, his parents are separated, he is dealing with the death of his brother still to this day, he, he's on the run from the law, you still see him kind of act like real hero. And he you see him from last episode to this episode, finding that balance again between vigilante and hero. And so in the beginning of the episode, we see Tandy explain to Tyrone what happened in the rabbit hole and she brought uh, Connors back out into the world. And of course, Tyrone is very upset. He's super mad because he wanted the evil Bridget to come back out and not Connors. And now he's escaped and he could be doing God knows what, God knows where. Tyrone uses his new lessons that he learned from his girlfriend about voodoo and calls upon the Devay of Justice to help him find Connors. And of course, since he learned how to control his breathing, he was able to find him very quickly. And Connors actually wants to turn himself in. He has learned his lesson while he's been waiting in that rabbit hole. And he was saying that it was his own personal nightmare, just him and his thoughts and reflections of his past decisions. So honestly, he is ready to turn himself in, to be a good guy, and to let Tyrone live a normal life. But we find out in this episode that his uncle is the fat man from the last episode. So if you missed last episode, there is a fat man that is in, in cahoots with the government of Louisiana, and he was there at a public hearing to try and determine whether or not they're gonna do an investigation on a police officer. And the fat man nodded at Tyrone's mom and then she said no, which caused the investigation to end right then and there. And of course the public is very upset about it. So fast forward, Connors tells Tyrone that his uncle has all these connections and they need to find a file in order to fully relieve Tyrone from this seclusion and also to go back to a normal life and to also to save the city. So who does Tyrone bring Connors to? 
his dad, which I think is amazing that we see his dad hanging out in the old neighborhood and he is finishing off the cloak that we see back in season one. And the cloak is so cool to see that his dad is finishing it. So hopefully by the end of season two, we actually see Tyrone utilize the cloak and also kind of have this closure because that cloak that his dad is finishing was supposed to be his brother's billy what else happened so after tyrone brought connor's to his dad he gets all the information from connor's and goes on this mission to try and find the file long story short he doesn't find it and he's super upset about it takes connor's back to the church by himself and grills him and Connors is telling him, like, look, I don't know what happened to the file. I know I gave you all the information that I know. Let's pretty much work together. And we see in that moment that Tyrone has every opportunity to kill Connors, to drop him off in the ocean, to drop him off somewhere else, to just drop him off at the police station. But he doesn't. And he keeps... Connor's there, from my understanding, at the church. So a lot has been going on in this episode, in this season of Cloak and Dagger in general, and I think that all of these little loose ends are going to be tied up pretty soon. Based on the like flow that's going on in this show, it kind of seems that season two might be a little bit shorter than season one just because they are moving a lot quicker than what I thought they were going to be doing. They kind of brought Connors back a lot sooner than I thought they were. So it's kind of interesting what they're going to be doing next because with Connor's uncle and Tandy being kidnapped, I kind of only see two or three more episodes before they kind of have to jump off into another mini plot. But let me know in the comments below what do you think. And don't forget to follow us at Long Story Short Show on YouTube. And please follow me at TheFillerican1 on Instagram and everywhere else that you can find me.